I don't know if you can hear all the animals. The cows are going crazy. They're on the back run. They're ready to rotate behind the behind the smokehouse. The other cows are going crazy. The roosters are going crazy. It's a beautiful morning here on the farm. So this video is going to be a good one. It's going to be six skills that you need to put in your repertoire to learn to understand how to get ourselves and our families through an economic crisis, a national disaster, or even a Great Depression. Hopefully this will help you to build these skills to help your family through anything that's coming our way because you never know what we're going to face in this crazy world we live in. The video starts right now. Hey, good morning. It's feeding time here at the Max. Open the feed shed. Cows are going crazy. We've already milked this morning. It's been a great, great morning. We have literally seen gas go to skyrocketing amount. Actually, if you look at the studies, they have set pumps to where they can go double digits. So that shows that gas and diesel could easily reach over double digit marks. We're at $5 where I'm at locally. Turn the feed light on for the feed shed, guys. Sorry, I couldn't get to it. So we're at $5 locally here. And I know there's a lot of other places that are even higher than that. Diesel is about $6 a gallon where I'm at. So that's not cheap. And that's how we run our farm. So never a good thing. Today's video is gonna help us understand the fact of the hyperinflation or inflation woes that we're dealing with, the craziness in our world, if it's wars, if it's just simply the shortages that we're dealing with. Hopefully these skills will help you if the crap hits the fan and you need to take care of your family. So, number one, this is an easy one. We work on the farm, we're carrying all these big bags of feed, we're, we're tilling the gardens, we're hoeing the gardens by hand, and, and you know what? We can't get winded. When we talk about survival ship and making sure we're taking care of our family, we need to make sure that we are in shape. Now, I'm not saying you need to be able to run a marathon or do a triathlon or be able to bench press 250 pounds if you weigh 150 pounds. But I am saying we need to stay in aerobic activity. We need to make sure that when the government tells us to, you know, to lock in and, and to shut in for a time of pandemic or that we have get we get in the hustle bustle of work, we need to understand the value of making sure that we are taking care of our body by keeping aerobic activity. Make sure we're moving, make sure that we are working out, we're doing all that we can. If it's walking, if all you can do is walk, walk, because it helps us. Not only does it help us with our health, but it also helps us to deal with some of the things that kind of can throw to us. Sickness sometimes will get better, especially if we're taking care of our bodies. And that's aerobic activity. Make sure that you are working out you are doing some kind of calisthenics, you are doing some kind of HIIT workouts, you're doing cardio, you're doing something, if it's running, if it's swimming, if you need to do low impact uh, working out, that's okay. It doesn't matter what age you're at. There's people down our road. We have a pretty downtown area. We have a Walmart that people walk in. So find ways and means to make sure that you are keeping active and having aerobic activity. We don't need to be a bunch of fat people sitting around eating fast food because then guess what? Our health is going to be sucky and it's going to be hard to get through tough times. So within the last few minutes, we've put 200 pounds on the ranger to haul all over the farm. And that's good that we are able to utilize our hands, make sure that we're not winded, make sure we are doing aerobic activities to take care of chores, but also it just helps and it makes you feel better to work out and be in shape. So number one, be in shape, be healthy. Try to do all you can to have aerobic activity. As simple as swimming, wa walking, running, jogging, hit workouts, or pumping iron. Do one of those things. So as we are walking back close to the smokehouse, I want to talk about the second major skill that you need to learn. Uh, our, our smokehouse is ran completely off grid. We, we run only with uh, fire and us building the fire, no butane, no electronics, nothing. Uh, just so we can make sure that we are curing and smoking no matter what the situation is with this world. So that brings up the second point. You see this uh, outdoor stove, this is a fat stove is what this one is called. But we have an outdoor stove, we actually have two of them. And we have our fireplaces that are outdoor and indoor. And then we also can cook over, we have some tripods and some grills that we can cook over, over fire. The benefits to all those things is 
you can now heat yourself, you can cure and preserve meat, and you can cook your food or boil your water. All those things are a necessity when it comes to survivalship and taking care of your family. Second point would be, you need to know how to make a fire. I would challenge you to definitely stock up on matches, lighters, if you don't know how to start a fire. Uh, what we've done is we, of course, have matches, we have lighters, but not only that, we have flints, we have uh, uh, striking stones, we have different elements and ways and means, even when it's rainy, wet, humid outside, we can start fires. If you don't know how to start a fire, you need to learn. That kind of goes along with making sure that not only can you start a fire, you understand what burns well, what's a lighter or what, you know, what actually is a natural lighter, if it be pine or if it be some kind of sap or if it be little things you can purchase online to start your fires. You need to make sure you understand how to start a fire because the value of having a fire for heat, warmth, safety and security, but also to cook your meals, filtrate and purify your water the best that you know how. Learn to be able to build a fire, learn to buy the stuff that you need to start a fire. Don't depend on just oils and lighters all the time. Learn to use flints, learn to use striking stones because it can really save your life. It's time to feed the chickens. That's the bee houses that we were able to harvest honey from yesterday. I have one more bee apiary on the other side of the farm. If you're interested in any of our vlogs or what we do with the bees or what we do with all these animals, we have tons of playlists. Uh, we, we love talking prepping and survival, but without our farm, it would be hard to do any of it. So I challenge you to check those out. They're fun. You see the kids a lot more than seeing ugly old me. <laughs> and before we leave this part of the farm, that brings up point three. We're in our permaculture zone one. This is where a lot of our herbs, a lot of our medicinal perennials, a lot of our uh, apiary that the bee loves so a lot of our flowering herbs uh, a lot of things we make tinctures out of are all in these raised beds around the greenhouses in the greenhouse and all through all this back porch area even down to over here the benefit of number three is huge having and learning natural remedies now misty has a video on foraging and making natural medicines. We'll link both of those videos uh, on the cards above and also in the description below. But it's in the food security playlist. Check those out. We like to think about food and skills and tools, but natural remedies and having medicines and ways to make medicine and ways to make natural remedies, such as a bug bite, what can we do? For mosquito repellent, what can we do? For a burn, what can we do? What kind of oils, what kind of you know what kind of herbs would be best for that uh, if we have a snotty nose and respiratory issues kind of like i'm having right now with the sinus and allergy stuff what can i take uh, what does best for whatever we're going through make sure that you're building a common knowledge of simple herbs or foraging methods in your area put yourself in some wisdom and knowledge and learning those things because that third skill could help you and your family when you may not can get medicine and you just may need some relief from some of the health issues that you may be dealing with or some of the burns or some of the things. Think about it. If you're lighting a fire and all of a sudden you get a little burn on you, what herb or what little medicinal benefit to these flowers may can help that burn go away or at least take the sting out of it. Herbs, learning foraging, learning the value of natural remedies right here in your backyard like this respiratory junk that i'm dealing with right here you can kind of hear it in my sinus and my talking there's the elderberry this monster tree that we foraged we uh, propagated and we put back on farm these elderberries we've been taking elderberry syrup that's been made from our echinacea coneflower from our elderberry which are all these plants all right through here and back here and the ones we still forage and our honey, that's just three of the ingredients, but ultimately those are provided right here. It's natural remedies and it is game changers for your health. So number three, you need to be learning natural remedies. It's just a beautiful morning here. The animals bellow, love it. All these things that we talk about, as I've said in plenty of other videos, they are tips of survival. They are ways to make good choices and to be better and to be able to survive. Learning how to have some aerobic activity, make a fire and uh, you know, learn natural remedies and herbs. None of those things 
are not good to have anyways. Talk about tips of survival. This is just good knowledge to know to be good stewards with the things that you've been given around you. So going back to the point of, yes, we believe that there's some major great um, inflation coming, hyperinflation coming. We believe that there is some major changes in the world. This is a great, great, great reset or even down to a recession, depression. We do believe the dollar is failing. But if again, if we're wrong on all those things, by learning these skills, they're just good knowledge to have just to be a good person and to teach your kids and to live longer, healthier life. Now we don't feed our, our cattle and our sheep uh, daily. They're, they, they're ruminant animals and they're living off this gorgeous grass that we have on farm. We rotationally graze. We are intense uh, rotational gra grazing. We believe in a regenerative ag, meaning we are constantly maneuvering animals around farm. So they're not on their own manure. They're not eating bad quality grass. They're able to flash graze this beautiful, beautiful field. Chickens and ducks come behind it, help spread the manure because they're looking for the larva that's in the manure. Also, they help make the ground more fertile because they're spreading that manure and also dropping their own manure, which is high in nitrogen. The whole point of me saying all this is we live in a very regenerative ag policy here on farm. We believe in a healthy animal. Process of, of calling, uh, of selling, uh, over the last five to seven years of getting a quality herd of every animal that we have on farm, from the sheep to the cattle, from the beef cow to the dairy, even down to the chickens, roosters, and pigs that we have on farm. What I mean by that is when we go to that mentality, number number four skill that you need to learn is your animals need to learn to be hardy. You need to develop a herd and take the practices and the skills of learning regenerative ag and building a strong set of animals. These animals are not wormed. These animals are not getting any kind of antibiotics. I think on farm, out of you know the hundreds of animals we've had and have still on farm, we've had to treat maybe one or two or three. Now, and that being said, when we have to treat an animal, we give it a chance to get better, of course. We don't want anything to happen to the animal. But ultimately, if the animal cannot thrive on farm in our way of making sure that we're trying to keep a more holistic, natural uh, meat source, but also animal, a healthier animal without, without antibiotics or without some kind of deworming or some kind of uh, remedy that we have to give them, uh, over the counter or going to the feed stores when we don't when we have to have that dependency these animals are not all they are they need to be without the use of chemicals or synthetic fertilizers on the ground or having hay that's been sprayed or ha are worrying about you know are we treating them or do we deworming them these animals don't have to worry about that because we built the herds so you need to build the skill and learn the skill if you're owning animals not only it gives you pride and take pride and giving you good quality animals you hear them they're all going crazy you're building a herd that you know that is great quality that's holistically raised organically raised on farm that's not needing all this stuff placed in their body to make it and, and there's just a benefit to that not only of you partaking meat but being able to sell a high quality animal to another farm for them to do the same thing so practice that let that be number four as a skill set learning holistic regenerative agriculture if you're doing and that could be as simple as the smallest animal to the biggest but make sure you're practicing and learning those skills today so for instance they are on fresh grass they're helping our pastures grow they're getting quality feed that's supplemental from the pasture that the cows did not eat they're spreading the manure it's a great way to take care of animals. And, and back to point three, you see those little yellow flowers through there? That's Black Eyed Susans. Great for foraging and for your health. We have a video that Misty had made about a week ago. You need to check out. Talks about Black Eyed Susans, talks about other ways to forage. So going back to one of the last points, you need to learn to forage because right there in the pasture, it's medicine for you. 
we actually had two litters of pigs the uh that's one of the mamas there so we have uh we shared a video about how we raise pigs for free go check that out that's really cool especially if you're looking into buying pigs but let's see if we can get to the other litter we're not going to get in we don't want to disturb them by any means we try to keep as natural as possible so we don't want to put any kind of human interaction because the mama don't like it anyway but look can you see the little pigs right here in that bale of hay we bed them down in hay we got one mama in the barn the other mama didn't want to go in the barn so if she wants to stay out we want to give her proper natural way to have these babies in the forest beside the point sorry i love pigs i, lo I love raising them they're fun uh, again we don't treat our pigs we raise these these have been hardy look at that big boar he's a monster he's the man he's the one that takes care of the farm here when it comes to the pigs here's the other babies if you can see them right there fresh bedding daily into uh, the barn this brings up my next point you see the barn here you see the fence you see this fence see that big structure see that old f600 you see that little trailer we have a lot of stuff on farm now there's nothing wrong nothing wrong with you getting someone to help you build these things like i didn't build this barn i built a lot of this fence across this property you have to make sure that in a depression situation in a hard life situation in an economic crisis sometimes when we want to pay somebody to do things for us we may not have the funds we may not be able to have somebody change our oil or or change our spark plugs in our side by side or in one of these older trucks here so point five would be you have to become a jack of all trades you have to be innovative and you have to learn things and skills to start building to take care of your farm to build shelters all the shelters that's on the back side of this property a lot of the mobile chicken coops not the ones you just saw the steel ones but we have a whole other set of wood chicken tractors and wood mobile coops and sheep uh, coverings is built on farm now if you'd have told me 10 years ago that i was going to build all that i just said look i can't put a nail and a hammer together but you learn things you learn how to uh, get certain skills to take care of your farm because ultimately it saves money but then it teaches you to be independent and not have to worry about paying someone else to do it our time is valuable so we understand that if there's times and we have the extra funds if, if our farm's done well and we can hire somebody to do something absolutely that's okay because that's how the world goes around you're helping your neighbor which again talks about another point that we're going to be bringing up simple things you don't have to learn to be rebuild a motor but you may can change your you know change your oil you may not understand how to uh, how the battery and how the combustion works, but you know how to change the spark plug or the battery in the vehicle Try to work on older vehicles. We've been trying to buy older vehicles. We have a, a older Dodge We have an older Ford uh, Because we want to make sure that those things are easier to fix definitely with us being more dumb to vehicles It allows us to understand them a little bit easier So learn to be a jack-of-all-trades in the Great Depression a lot of times the people who thrived were the ones who could barter their talents and their tools and their ways and skills so it allowed them to okay they could come fix this and they could get payment of food for it they could come fix this and they would get this learning to be a jack of all trades and taking care of your farm of your home of your backyard if you need to know how to fix a pipe you need to learn how to do that again not saying you can't pay someone to do it but you need to learn some of those basic skills and, and be safe get wisdom with it but learn to be a jack of all trades and understand the value of learning how to be independent on your property and taking care of your family because when it comes down to it people are not going to just simply come help you when the world is you know going to crap they're going to take care of their family and you've got to take care of yours and by having means traits skills to be a jack of all trades to help build to fix a car to do little small things it helps you gain that independence it also gives you a confidence booster to learn something new again i'm not the best builder but misty she loves getting new little projects so we'll build enclosure for animals or we'll build this new little piece of furniture for our home to hold more cans for canning we have built so many little things to hold food which is a good thing and again it's one of those things that because she wanted it i did it because she's my wife and i want to make her happy 
But, the, but it, what it does, it gives us a confidence booster. It helps us say, you know what? We can do this. So we've built a lot of furniture, a lot of things that can help our home. <laughs> The last point I want to bring up is number six, is you have to build community. You have to have a good neighbor situation. When we talk about the dangers of our society and when people get very desperate, things may happen. Uh, people may want your what you have. Uh, we're in a different time in our world to where people don't respect people's stuff as much as they should. We see theft, we see murders, we see a life that's kind of unpleasing to the Lord. So we agree again, we're Christians. So we look at everything in a godly perspective, but I want to build a community and I want to go to a church. I want to have neighbors. I want to live in an area that can support each other. I can't provide everything I need always. I will need help and not having pride enough to say that and too selfish is saying we need to work together. The last skill, it's just being good to people and understanding you can help that person by helping that person they can help you there's something that you can trade if you're a jack of all trades but you're better in mechanics jack of all trades and they're better in water filtration and plumbing and they're better in woodworking or whatever it may be you can change those skills out build that community and now you're, you're doing something amazing you're working together you're being innovative you're building traits you're building skills you're working as a community to take care of your neighbor that's biblically that's spiritual but also it helps us to be better people think of it this way too you may be the community builder you may be the neighbor you may be the one that everybody looks to and says you know what if he can do it i can do it so part of being a good community building a community a situation where we take care of each other we build a neighbor situation where we take care of our neighbors where we live in a community that sees the value in helping each other you may be the positive energy that actually turns it all around that says you know what i can do this let me help you get this started and by that you encourage other people to be innovative you encourage other people to do good things now ultimately i want my family safe and i'm going to do everything i can to take care of them but part of our human nature and part of who we are, especially spiritually talking, is we also want to help take care of other people. And building that community, building that camaraderie, understanding you can barter, trade, building those, those skills to be jacks of all trades for each other can be a game changer in your survival plan. All six of these things are just common things that probably your grandma would have told you to do and your grandpa would have told you to do it's good to learn skills it's good to build knowledge on doing all the things that we talked about but it also will help you be more self-sufficient more sustainable more independent more innovative and also to know that you can depend on people when they're thinking like you guys hope these videos have helped if you think oh I for he forgot something I like these survivor videos what is he talking about go to our playlist the last 10 or so videos have been really honed in on prepping survival and understanding the value of uh, work and making sure that you're taking care of your family so i hope that you will check those out check out the the forging videos the the natural remedy herb videos the garden videos most importantly be strong in this crazy world we live in and it's okay not to know everything and it's okay to have to depend on people but build these skills because ultimately it can take care of your family god bless happy homestead y'all